Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to game 2 of this best of 3 from the Zotac Cup. It is a PvP and let's introduce these two players for anyone just joining us. It is of course in the top right, Sage as the yellow Protoss player and in the lower right as the pink Protoss, we do of course have Fargo. So, what can we expect from these two? The map's whirlwind. This map is huge, which for a PvP could actually make things quite interesting because generally speaking, this map can produce some longer games or some more cheesy games, so we'll wait and see. It all comes down to the scouting, because of course, if you do find where your opponent is relatively quickly, it can be quite fun, and all in all, it'll be... I'm quite excited to see what these two are going to do, because on a map like this, just with the amount of space you have and how big it is, it can... it does it cater towards a macro game, but then PvP is never really a macro game matchup. It's just not the way it works, so all in all, these two have got some decisions to make, and decisions equals fun for us, definitely. So yeah, keep tuned. Now, let's talk a little bit about what we saw in Game 1, because of course Game 1 was pretty funky all by itself. We did start off with the beautiful Sage being like, I'm gonna DT rush you, and Fargo was like, without any scouting should I point out, I'm gonna DT rush you, and the two of them DT rushed each other to death. Unfortunately for Sage though, his DT got out faster. It went charging forward. I, sh I say charging. DTs sort of shuffle a bit in my opinion. They're not quick by any means. Got into Fargo's base and started chipping away at all these probes. When it noticed the one, there was a dark shrine. Two, there was a robotics facility which meant one thing and one thing only. An observer would eventually hit the field. Sage then noticed that, hang on, there's two DTs in my base killing everything. And I don't have a robotics facility, so GG. And I can't actually think of a time I've ever cast a PvP where they DT rushed each other in such a comical manner. It was absolutely brilliant. And of course, that meant the game one went to Fargo. So great work by Fargo. Now, this is what's really exciting though. A Nexus first. A Nexus first out of Sage. When literally Nexus first in PvP, that is bold. But... Fargo is going to scout the top right last. Oh my goodness, Fargo. Fargo, you've got no clue this is going on. Instead, you're getting up your second gas, your cybercore, and your second gateway. You are doing the standard Protoss v Protoss matchup. You are just getting down everything you could. Meanwhile, though, we've got the forge coming down for Sage. Sage is there happily being like, I might need some cannons. Perhaps some detection. Perhaps a little bit of anti-DT play may be in order after game one. Perhaps I should just be a bit defensive and try and turtle up because I've taken an expansion in PvP. That in itself is the riskiest thing I've ever seen. But yes, so far, obviously Sage just chilling here with the watchtower being like, hey, let's see where you go. Because you've got to come through the middle, really, any way you scalp, which means that it can be quite interesting to find out where your opponent is. And as we can see, there's no scanning information from Sage at the moment. He may assume from this that Fargo is actually in the lower left position which would be incorrect because he's in the lower right as we can see from the everyone vision. Photon Cannon is down though, we've got the first Zealot coming, we've got the Cybercore and only the one gas, that's compared to this double gas which is very early out of Fargo for the moment so he should be revealing what sort of tech he's going towards, he's getting up an awful lot of Vespian banked up He's got the Double Stalker on its way. That Double Stalker isn't going to have too much fun, though, because we do have the Photon Cannon down. The Probe Count is going to start skyrocketing for Sage, though, being able to produce double the amount that Fargo can. And all in all, that means that his income is going to be far superior. It means he's going to have a lot more units in the mid-game, and he should be able to get a lot more tech out. The downside to this sort of play, though, is what if I just die? That is always a concern you should have when you take a fast expansion because if you die any amount of income or advantage you get in the mid game is irrelevant because you never make it there it's like saying if I was on the moon I would only weigh however much that's why I don't need to go on a diet unfortunately you're not on the moon and you're not likely to be on the moon in any amount of time soon so that's always a concern meanwhile looking down here though we've got very little scanning information here for Sage at the moment, but he's still getting the second Photon Cannon because he knows he's got to be careful. He's still getting up the additional gateways though, he's also getting up more Stalkers, but he's got no Warp Gate tech yet. To compare that, of course, to the Warp Gate tech already complete for Fargo, and he's going to be able to apply some pressure. There's a good number of Stalkers here, the Zealots are moving forward, the Photon Cannons are going to get targeted very quickly indeed. The first one is going to fall, the Zealots are doing some good damage, the probe getting forward, another cannon is completing, 
And, well, that gets taken down quickly as well, but two more cannons are there. And Fargo, for the time being, is being forced back. He's getting two more Stalkers warping in. Of course, we do only have the two warp gates at the moment, two more on the way. So, essentially, it's just going to be a full gate. More cannons are getting produced. The probe's still coming forward, still trying to tank up some of the damage. The Zealot's getting kited backwards. These three cannons really need to finish for Sage if he's going to hold this. But if he does hold it... He is going to be in an amazing position. Of course, a lot of these stalkers taking a lot of damage. The two cannons are now just finishing up, and we see the probes getting pulled back. And Fargo is now in major problems, because he is not going to be able to punch through that with the units he's got here at the moment. Some more warpings coming in. Warkate Tech is now finished for Sage, getting some more Zealots, also getting up his robotic facility. That is going to be key should he hold this off in the long term. But of course, Fargo immediately now is going to be thinking, I've committed to this, I've got to go for it. He can't afford to expand, and if he doesn't do some good damage, he knows he's definitely going to be behind. So it's kind of all or nothing, but in comes some more warpings, more zealots out there. The cannon's doing some nice damage straight away. We're seeing the stalkers and cannons really decimating this army. Two of the zealots remain in terms of the lost tab, as we can see already. Fargo now starting to come out behind. As these warpings complete, it's going to become harder and harder for the pink Protoss player to try and push through this. Compare that, of course, to what Sage is doing. He's kind of boosting out his gateways. He's making a good number of probes. And as a result, he's got a great economy. He's ahead by four workers already. That's only going to get even more severe as, of course, we don't have much else here. Looking down here, Sage putting down a pylon in his opponent's base as well. And the purpose of that is ultimately just so he can start warping in units to go for the counter aggression. He knows he's going to be able to be quite defensive. He's getting a fourth cannon up. He's getting the immortal out. So that essentially means the Fargo will not be able to punch through here and will not be able to come and actually deal the damage he needs to do. And then the counter attack is ready for Sage with the pile on there because all of Fargo's units are so far out of position and it would take them so long to be able to get back. We've got yet more cannons being produced. The Immortal nearly complete. Units still on their way out. Sage won't go for the aggression until at least that Immortal is finished because that's the point where we'll be able to do a lot more damage to the Stalkers and be in a much stronger position in order to defend. Yet more units are getting warped in. We're getting, well, Connor Boost on a robotic facility is doing nothing. The engagement on its way for some good force fields there already though for Sage. And there is the GG out of Fargo and that levels the series up one apiece. So we'll go to game three any second. Before you go though, remember like the video, leave a cool comment, and send me a cool tweet on Twitter. And then what we'll do, flick over to my channel and I'll see you at Game 3 right about now.